There we go, guys. Now we are in game. We see Liquid General, of course, being our Swedish Tyrant player. Sveriga. Hey, yeah, uh, Sveriga. I think that's how they cheer in Sweden. Hey, yeah. Uh. Hey, yeah, uh, Sveriga. <laughs> and on the right top side of the map, we have our Korean Protoss player, Puzzle. Puzzle, who needs to win uh, to keep. Basically, to, uh, to keep his rank 1 position in the division, which is, of course, a really big deal. He's 4-1 right now. Got a little bit lucky. MC was not able to play last week, so he got the walkover against MC. If you ever want to receive a walkover, Ben, it's probably, uh, again, yeah. it's probably against MC. But that could be a very important one, because that could make the difference at the end of the road between Pozo and MC, because MC having a 3-1 record right now did not actually lose yet in the NESL. I think the only walkover that might be more impactful is the one Puma got over Stefano. Yeah. Uh, just a couple weeks prior to that, Stefano had 3-0'd Puma at assembly. <laughs> and uh, I imagine Puma was probably sweating that game, but uh, Stefano was on his ski trip. Wasn't able to make that, and so Puma remains undefeated in Division One. Stefano, in general, doesn't care that much, Ben. I would love to say that, like, as soon as it's playoffs, Stefano cares a lot more, or when he's, he's at our finals, <laughs> he cares a lot more. You just no. don't know with Stefano. You <laughs> just don't. Sometimes he's... Uh, I actually, I really think that if if Stefano wouldn't have partied during events, he would have probably made, like, $60,000 more in his career. Yep. <laughs> Like, oh. if you have followed his Twitter today, you just have no idea what's going on. <laughs> the guy is playing, like, MLG Championship Sunday. You think, he's, he, like, you think he's super stoked to win an MLG. Finally, does really well in MLG. And the first tweet you read this morning about Stefano is like, why do I wake up with an earring? It's like, oh, God, what did you do last night, Stefano? I don't even want to know. <laughs> Brings back memories of Home Story Cup. Maybe it wasn't all that bad, but yes, we saw uh, Stefano at Home Story Cup. Talking about the Home Story Cup, that tournament got recently announced as well. Home Story Cup 5? Yes, that is correct. Will be the second weekend of July. Of course, Ben and me are going to try to be there. We can't make any promises yet, but... Uh, yeah, I really hope we can go. It's, yeah. it's probably... Got to be very careful with the terminology yeah. here because NASL is amazing. Yes. But Home Story Cup is definitely one of the most anticipated events of the year because you get to see these players in a completely different setting. Everybody just gets to relax and, and be there, be their normal, charming yeah. selves. And I've been part of Home Story Cup since day one, Ben. I've been at the very first Home Story Cup, which started off small, the one that the Muslim managed to win. And the second one was a little bit bigger. And then people were like, hey, man, this tournament is free. Cool. Yeah, Home Story 3 was pretty awesome. Yeah, Home Story Cup 3 was huge. And Home Story Cup 4 was just off the charge. Mm -hmm. And I uh, cannot wait for Home Story Cup 5. It'll be... But if you ask me, event. like, all of the Home Story Cups were super awesome. Like, even the first one, which just had, uh, I believe, Zoka, Hazuops, and the Muslim, and Red, uh, at Dennis's place. Uh, that one was really, really fun already. And then the second one was a lot bigger when guys like Nama and Tots started to make their way over as well. But anyways, a lot of Home Story Cup chat. But, yeah, that one is coming up, so make sure to follow those guys at Twitter.com slash Home Story Cup. Because Dennis... Or not Home Story Cup, uh, just Twitter.com slash Take TV. Uh, because uh, yeah, the man behind the Home Story Cup, Dennis Galen, is an absolutely awesome guy with it. Yeah. Really real heart and good passion for esports. We've often said that if you look up esports, you'll see Twitch TV in the dictionary. But mm. uh, Dennis Galen is right there. Yeah, under alternate definitions, you have twi <laughs> you have takes face. <laughs> Man, interesting opening over here by Puzzle. Puzzle's opening up Stargate, and what a perfect perfect dream scenario to make up to to open Stargate because this is very risky. If you play against no gas, fast expand, I wouldn't say you're dead, but you're in a very very bad shape. You're in a horrible position. You're in bad shape. You need to make something happen. If you open Phoenix against Benchies, that's a dream scenario. That's how I used to beat very good players on uh, ladder in Europe. When it would be like, oh yeah, just beat rank 1 GM. Like I would tweet that with full pride, but I would never add that I opened Stargate <laughs> against the Benchie opening because <laughs> it's like the best thing that could ever happen to you. And uh, Jinro's not going to be able to see this anytime soon. Actually, he's not going to see it at all as there's units out blocking Puzzle's ramp and there's just a hell yeah. unit on the map for Jinro. No, the time that Jinro's going to see this is when he has Cloak. Uh, for the people who Ooh. wonder right now, what about Cloak? Oh, it's a Raven opening. That's actually pretty good. Maybe not good, but it's better than opening yeah, Banshee. Exactly. Uh, that's, that's probably where I want to go. Because Stargate is always very good against uh, one base Terran, because then actually picking off SUVs hurts Terran quite a bit, and their army is just not as scary. If you guys wonder, what about Cloak Banshee, Roti? Isn't that very good against Stargate? No, because part of the real build, uh, Puzzle is not doing it right now, and yes, now Cloak Banshee would have been very good, because Puzzle just doesn't make a robotics facility, which is playing with fire. But there is a build where you can get both Stargate and the robotics facility. Uh, of one base and your observer is just about to pop when uh, the first cloak bench makes their way into your base. So General goes fast tech lab on a star part and then Raven into Viking. Wow, well, so sick. Uh, the only reason now he cancelled the Raven because he saw the Phoenix. Ah, okay. Uh, and now he makes a Viking, which he of course rather makes from a reactor star port, but he needs something. Uh, but Phoenixes are actually pretty good against 111. Now we see. Um, 
The only thing that I'm a little bit uh, surprised by, Ben, is that Puzzle makes the Nexus at his natural. I don't think he has to do this. I would have loved to see the pu uh, Puzzle take the, this, like, uh, secret. Right. Yeah, because it's so extremely hard to scout against Phoenix. Phoenix gives you absolute ma map control. So if Puzzle just have one unit over here, one unit over here, and everything that passes the Cell Naga Watchtower as he picks up with Phoenixes, and then he's going to have enough time because he, when like the moment general wants to fight, he doesn't have to fight here. He can wait a little bit longer here, and the moment he has two colossus, he's going to be more than fine because marines are not a threat anymore. So I'm a little bit surprised that Pozo expands over here, but I think he's going to be more than fine. Certainly right now, because uh, general is actually expanding behind this, which is a dream scenario once more for Pozo. Yeah, so good stuff here. When you play Phoenixes, you're often vulnerable to like some weird stem timings. Yes. But even that's not something he has to worry about, as Jinro never had a tech lab on his barracks. He swapped it out. Or I, I, he never even swapped it out. He just never built it. The first tech lab was built on the factory. Yeah, the only thing you really have to worry about um, when you open Phoenix is that they open no gas fast expand or even a two racks into uh, expand. Or like let's say like Marauder into expand is all very very good because there's going to be a moment when Terran has a lot of stim bio units and you're just not able to defend your exp your expand. It's simple as that. So that's why if you want to expand, you have to go for a hidden expand, and even that is risky too because then there's going to be a moment where there are medevacs and stim bio, and you're not able to defend both bases at once because by then Terran can scout. Oh, this is so good for Puzzle. He's got an eight yeah. worker lead. And the command center is still not complete for General. Oh, okay, just now complete for General. Uh, General's also getting Siege. I like this. Um, I think I think one of the answers to the issues Terrans have been having in, uh, in TVP is having tanks to kind of fight around. That's something that Puma's always done well. Look at this, man. Those two Marines were having a fight in the base. <laughs> like this one Marine is like, oh, I saw what you did with my wife last Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> this is the John Terry of Marines. <laughs> He's not very loud. Where's the Hank Moody Marine is what I want to know. <laughs> the Hank Moody Marine? He is not here, that's why he's Hank Moody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think he's in the bunker with, uh, yeah. with the uh, with the Jennifer Lopez Marine. <laughs> no, with all the medics. <laughs> <laughs> with three medics and uh, I don't know. We never know what drives the Raven, but <laughs> it's a weird robot. Uh, yeah, might be good enough for Hank Moody. Uh. I love Hank Moody. He's my favorite character after Harry Gold. <laughs> 70 supply to 75 supply. Puzzle starting to chrono boost out those upgrades, and this is a position he should be pretty comfortable from. Right, it's, it's so nice to play Phoenix in this scenario, Ben. Like, maybe my explanation about Phoenix openings against Terrans uh, was a little bit complicated earlier on, but it's actually not all that complicated. Basically, fast expand bio is very good for Terran against uh, Phoenix. Everything else is very good for Protoss, and you can just see that because Terran is actually really quite handicapped. And that's why I just, for instance, said as well, like back then when I played a lot of leather in Europe, I was often able to defeat the best Terrans in Europe just by opening Phoenix, which is a huge gamble. Uh, but yeah, it's just so nice. And if you know how to play it out, you're in an excellent position as Terran, and there's really not that much to worry about. Uh, as Protoss, of course. Junior is going to push with combat shields. Um, yeah, but by now... He doesn't like have stim, though. And the first Colossus is going to be out. Of course, I mean, Puzzle's going to have to do something right, but he couldn't use those Phoenixes as well to lift up the siege tanks. Uh, but what he basically should do is just make a lot of Zealots and then just walk in with your Colossus, and you're going to be fine. Yeah, Puzzle, because of these Phoenixes, knows exactly what's yeah. happening. Puzzle's so like doing over. small over tech kill, like double fortune stuff. That's really not necessary because he has much better economy, so he doesn't have to prepare for a later phase of the game. Right now, all you need is as many units as soon as possible, and as soon as you do uh, as soon as you have that, like if Puzzle crushes this attack, it's absolute game over. So I'm a bit surprised that he's going double forge, which I think is unnecessary. But hey, it's Puzzle, man. Who am I to question Puzzle? I think Jenner also realizes the uh, the difficulty that he's facing. That's why he's probably pushing so quickly he says all right i've got to win now or else i have no chance puzzle did mm. i think it's no, going to be two colossus and 34 marines man yeah the I tanks will help a little bit and uh there are vikings in the mix which is not that many and of no. course as you said the phoenix is so valuable because they can lift units they can uh, they can they, they absorb damage yeah. from those vikings here we go this fight is going to happen immortal comes forward and immediately just crushes that tank the colossi doing exactly what they do Zip zip. All the Marines are dying, man. Phoenix doing a really good job against those Vikings as well. Jinro tries to make something happen over here, but this is just an absolutely unwinnable fight for him. Yep, he uh, manages Whoa. to kill the two Colossi. Yeah, but it doesn't really matter because by the time the next push comes, there's going to be more Colossus, and Jinro still is behind in workers as yeah, well. Yeah, he knows it. GG, Jinro taps out. Puzzle takes game number two. <laughs>
Um, it's about as close as you can get to a build order win, Kev. Yeah, uh, I couldn't agree more. As I said, uh, I've been in this position where you're able to beat better players w with a very good build order, and I wouldn't say that uh, that's what Puzzle needs to be Jinro. I mean, the ranking would say the opposite is true, but this is just a perfect scenario. But I wouldn't say it's all luck. If you watch Jinro's games throughout the NESL, he often lost to open one base. He opened one base on Ohana, and uh, yeah, why would he go into Nexus first once more, one guess? one gate fast expand nexus if you can open something like phoenix against them most likely to be one base general yeah. like hey i will do the exact same thing phoenix so is good against a lot of one base builds it against every one yeah. base build really i don't know any one seven base racks <laughs> that's not a build man it's a build <laughs> it's a build let's take one final look at that last fight so we can see just how well it went yeah. for uh for puzzle those colossus man all the marines just lined up yeah, I mean, and this happens, and uh, Colossi just... And the Immortal did a very good job as yeah. well, in absorbing so much damage and picking off a tank straight away. Yeah. General does do a good job at uh, killing both uh, Colossus with his siege tanks, but it doesn't really matter. Yep. Puzzle looking very strong in game number two, and uh, evens up the series as we move into yeah. our third and final game in this TVP. That last one brought to you by Epson Projectors, the best and brightest line of projectors in the world. You can check out all their products at epson.com slash projectors. And we'll be using those projectors next Sunday at our Sunday showdown with Naniwa versus Genius. If you haven't heard it yet, now you hear it again. Naniwa versus Genius, Ben. Why Naniwa am I so excited? Versus genius? Naniwa versus Genius? Did you say Naniwa versus Genius? I said Naniwa versus Genius. Cannot wait to see Naniwa versus Genius next Sunday. Naniwa versus Genius. <laughs> Short commercial break and then the final game of Jinro versus Puzzle. That's Genius with Naniwa.